All right, yeah. very good. Sorry for the sorry for the trouble. All right, so we're to the consent agenda. Any additions or corrections to the or any additions to the consent agenda? Otherwise, I'll take a motion to approve. Hearing none, I'll move to approve. Polmeyer. Motion by Commissioner Polmeyer is second by Commissioner Kruger. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. Commissioner Shemansky? Aye. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Aye. Commissioner Polmeyer? Aye. Commissioner Nagel is yes. Motion carries five to zero. Payment of the bills. Mr. Chairman, I'm Shemansky moves the payment of the bills. Motion by Commissioner Shemansky is there a second? Kruger seconds. Second by Commissioner Kruger. Any discussion? Hearing none, proceed to vote. Commissioner Shemansky? Aye. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner uh, Kruger? Aye. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Aye. Commissioner Nagel is yes. Motion carries five. Zero payment of bills in the amount of $82,853.05. All right, under a COVID update, uh, Barrett, welcome and thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my COVID update for today, um, as of today or earlier this morning, uh, we had 2,200 positive cases of COVID-19 in McLeod County uh, with 13 probable cases. Um, which means they are most likely positive. Uh, at our last board meeting, which was uh, our regular board meeting, which was November 17th, I believe, I reported that we had um, 1,430 positive cases. That's an increase of 790 cases over two weeks or a 65% increase. Uh, about even between male and female, 48% are male, 52% are female. Uh, unfortunately, we have had 15 COVID-19 related deaths since the start of the pandemic, nine in the last two weeks. So that number is uh, definitely increasing. At this time, we have 64 residents who are hospitalized with COVID-19. Of those 64, seven are in a, a intensive care unit um, someplace throughout the state, not all locally. Of the number I reported, 327 are active cases, which means that they are still in their isolation period and should be uh, quarantining. Of those um, testing positive, 75% are reporting to be white or non-Hispanic, 12% are Hispanic or of our Latinx population, less than 1% Black or African American, and less than 1% American Indian. Uh, the rest um, are not reporting a race. The location of COVID-19 um, in our community, 28% of those positive live in Glencoe, 38% Hutchinson, 9% Lester Prairie, 7% in Winstead, Silver Lake at 4%, Stewart and Plato coming in at 2%, Brownton at 4% and the remaining percent are not reporting a, um, a location at this time. Our school rate, which comes out every Thursday, so this is last week's school rate, is 231%, uh, which um, is a very high number. We're predicting this Thursday for it to be at 262. Basically, that number um, means that um, Public schools or schools um, uh, should be in full distance learning for all grades. Um, I have had some questions just kind of over the last days about some of our smaller private schools that are continuing to be in person and they have every right to do that. Um, they, they don't need to necessarily follow the state of Minnesota's uh, guidelines on that. Um, but are continuing to work with local public health, public health um, on updates and suggestions. So uh, this week on, on uh, Monday, I believe it was, our free community testing at the Hutchinson Armory opened up. Um, that testing will be through um, the end of the year and go into next year as well. Um, there's information on um, our website um, on 
the uh, our social media posts on how to register. That is, again, a no barrier testing. Um, days each week do vary. There are some Saturdays that they are open as well. And from what we have here, they have been very busy for just the short time that they have been open. Um, we are aware of eight businesses um, that are reporting a business cluster. Um, so we are helping with those businesses um, get through the uh, screening of their employees and work through that. Most of our long-term care facilities, including skilled nursing homes and assisted living, have reported cases of COVID-19 in either their staff or their residents. Um, and right now we're seeing a rise of cases in our group homes in the county. So working through that. Um, as of yesterday, we, um, public health, has worked with our uh, county GIS department to create a new dashboard that is posted on our county website um, that gives uh, information about our COVID numbers um, right now that is being updated weekly. And um, as the pandemic uh, progresses, we hopefully maybe update that a little bit more frequently, but right now we are going to be updating that weekly. So and just a reminder, as always, for people to wear their masks, social distance, work from home when you can, and get tested when you are feeling ill. Any questions right. for me? Any questions for Barrett? Mr. Chair, okay, I have very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Barrett, as one of the people that have tested positive already about two weeks ago, is there any recommendations or um, wherewithals to retest for any reason. Um, I personally haven't gone anywhere in two weeks, so it's not, I'm not, I'm concerned about not giving it to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Pohlmeyer, thank you for that question. You know, right now, um, I you're doing what you should be doing is, you know, isolating yourself. Um, we're not finding any reason to retest at this point. Um, that may change as things progress, but um, right now we're not we're not finding a need or we're not hearing that that is recommended to be retested. Barrett, yes, Barrett. My understanding was that if so, someone in Commissioner Pohlmeyer's position were to retest, that for some time they still show up positive regardless of whether or not they've got through their symptoms and are no longer contagious. So is that part yeah. of the reason why you would not? Okay. Correct. That is part of the reason why, Sheila, that you want, want to test because you still could have some, uh, you know, some things still in your body that's showing that you're positive when you may not necessarily be active um, with COVID-19. So. Thank you. M Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes. B Barrett, uh, Commissioner Kruger, I, I, uh, have a question. I, I, I know I know the testing facilities are busy, and I, and I, um, uh, and and that's fine. People are. It, it gives them some security in, in knowing whether they have it or not. But my question, you've heard it from me before. Why is the antibody testing so hard to get? I mean, is it just an unwillingness to do it, or short staffed, or or, or why why are we not doing the antibodies? That, that's a good question, Commissioner Kruger. I don't know if it's as effective as the, the full test that we're doing right now. Um, I guess I would have to look into that more and, and get back to you. I don't know if it's harder to, to process or, or necessarily what the reason is behind that. And I have two reasons for no, and I'd like to know the answer kind of, I've, I've heard so many different ones mm -hmm. and I, I, to be quite honest, I get the run around, not from you, but from different places I went because there's such a need for blood and plasma. And I think they're still making some stuff out of it. It would be nice. Uh, you know, obviously I'm a, I'm a donator and I'm stayed away from it because of COVID, but it would be kind of nice to do, you know, if you had antibody tests, maybe more people wouldn't be quite so fearful of, of, of giving blood. It's just a thought. Right. I can right. certainly look into that more, Commissioner Kruger, and I'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Barrett. Um, Sheila, anything 
Uh, is Kevin here with us today or not? Kevin noted he didn't have anything new to share and wouldn't be attending. And then how about administration-wise? Anything for us? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as most of you recall from our last meeting, our special meeting on November 24th, um, we finished up the CARES Act payments. Today was the last day for McLeod County to distribute payments. Um, we did utilize all $4.368 million that was allocated to our county with um, increasing that amount for the business and nonprofit allocation to $2 million. And we will be creating a detailed press release um, showing what areas of the county that that went to and what types of industry and organizations so that you have a good idea of how those dollars were spent. And we'll be sharing that with the local newspapers as soon as possible. Um, I do see that I just got some of the information I need to do that during our meeting. Our employees still continue to work from home as needed. Um, obviously, we've seen the governor's orders. Anyone who can should be. And we appreciate those who can't, um, who put themselves out there every day and they're utilizing the correct PPE, keeping themselves safe. We've had many employees um, exposed through community exposure, also from each other, um, who have had to be quarantined or off of work. Many employees who have been positive. Um, Commissioner Polmeyer shared his own story. And we just want to continue to keep everyone safe and get through this. Um, especially unexpected to have another shutdown through December 18th for many of our local businesses. That is causing a lot of concern in the county. I've had many phone calls and emails from organizations asking questions. Um, I just encourage anyone watching that if you do have questions that we can try and help with, please reach out. The Association of Minnesota Counties is working with us, has asked for feedback on the impact on our local organizations, and we are sharing that information with them. So please don't hesitate to share with us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very good. All right, we'll uh, move on to the auditor treasurer portion of our business. Connie, are you on the call? Connie, you're muted. Sorry, yes, I'm here. Good afternoon again. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay. Go ahead. The item that I have today is strictly a notification of the proposed modification to the currently existing Hutchinson TIF District 4-16. Um, there will be a public hearing at the Hutchinson City Council on December 8th on this topic. From the documents that I've included in the packet, TIF District 4-16, excuse me, includes the site of the old medical center for those who probably, you know, are a little more accustomed to Hutchinson. Of course, that um, structure was demolished and it appears this proposal is for an adjacent parcel and perhaps even a street to build a 23 unit rental townhome on Franklin Street and expand the TIF district. Okay. Uh, no action needed, right, Connie? Just letting us know. Correct. Thank you. Uh, if anybody has any issues, they can attend the public hearing on the 8th at the City Lodge, correct? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Public Works, John. Good evening. Afternoon. Uh, first item we'd like to get to consider final acceptance and payment of $88,057.59. This is for a COCO contract. That's this for Asphalt Surface Technologies, otherwise known as Aztec. And again, that was for our annual CO code and payment marking projects. Those were completed satisfactorily, and we recommend final payment and acceptance. Commissioner Wright, move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Wright. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Shemansky. Second by Shemansky. Any discussion? Hearing none, proceed to vote. Commissioner Shemansky? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagel votes yes. Motion carries five to zero. Item B, uh, another consider final acceptance and payment of $575.75. This is to Dunnick out of Prinsburg. This was for state project 43070019. This was our highway safety improvement project on County Road 7, the shoulder paving job between 
212 and South Grid Road. Again, that was completed satisfactorily and we recommend final acceptance and payment. Very good. Schmansky moves to approve, oh. Mr. Chair. Motion by Commissioner Schmansky. Is there a second? Second. Paul Meyer. Second by Commissioner Paul Meyer. Any discussion? Great. I proceed to vote. Commissioner Schmansky? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Paul Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagel is yes. Motion carries five to zero. Item C, John. Item C, another final acceptance and payment for $3,500. This is for Mathwitz Construction out of Sleepy Eye. They did the projects SAP 43, 603, 30, and 31, and SAP 615, 14, and 15. Those were reconstruction projects on County Road 3 between 1 and 9, and County Road 9 in um, Carver County, and then County Road 15, a uh, large concrete overlay from County Road 3 up to County Road 22, and then the reconstruction on 15 from 22 up to Highway 7. Again, those have been completed satisfactorily, and we recommend final acceptance and payment. Right, any questions on item C? Mr. Chair, Schmansky moves to approve the uh, payment to Mathwitz Construction. Motion by Commissioner Schmansky. Is there a second? Kruger seconds. So I can make Commissioner Kruger. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. Commissioner Schmansky? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagel is yes. Motion carries five to zero. And MD, uh, consider final acceptance to all state pavement recycling stabilization. They did the cement stabilization project on County Road 54. That was our project CP17054. Uh, if you recall, uh, we, we had some um, issues with that project and we worked with resolution with the contractor for that. Uh, the resolution for that was that they, uh, in lieu of some penalties, they did the cement stabilization work that was required at the government center for um, a portion of the parking lot. It was approximately $50,000 worth of work that was um, basically traded for the, to get final acceptance on this project. So that has all been completed and we recommend uh, final acceptance. So no more money changing hands, just acceptance of the project and Correct. moving on with the business, right? Correct. All right, what commissions of the board? Commissioner Wright, move to approve. Motion Kruger, 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 is there a second? Second, Kruger, second. Kruger. Kruger. Any discussion? Commissioner Schmansky, how do you vote? Yes. I'm sorry, Doug, did you have some discussion? Just that we worked, Commissioner Wright and myself and John and some others, we worked with that on the, on the government center um, project and um, it's kind of uh, a long story that I'm not gonna get into, but it worked well. I think it was, it was, a, it was a good outcome for for both the county and the contractor. That's all I really have to Very say. We, we, we've got something that would have cost us a lot more if we'd have had to do it another way, so. Very good, thank you. All right, we'll call the question. Commissioner Schmansky? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Yes. Mr. Nagel, yes, motion carries five to zero. Item E, uh, we'd like you to consider approval of an agreement amendment for $5,742 for Erickson Engineering. Uh, this is for a bridge project on County Road 11, SAP 43611 013. Uh, that project, uh, our specifications for the project required 75 working days for the, for the contractor to be uh, completed in. Uh, there are approximately 20 some days over and above that. So the consultant we hired, Erickson Engineering, had additional time uh, spent on the project. And uh, we believe this is, a, this is a, a legitimate request from them and we recommend uh, accepting it. Um, 
as part of our uh, as part of our um, not negotiations with the contractor, but part of the specifications we have with the with the contract, they have to complete the project within a certain amount of days, or else we assess some liquidated damages. Uh, liquidated damages for this project, uh, given the amount of money, it's twelve hundred dollars a day. So we're going to have well over uh, the five thousand seven forty two to cover this. So um, there will be no out of pocket costs for us. In fact, um, we'll get money back from the contractor because of the um, his uh, tardiness in the project. Mr. Chair, All right, thank you. That that answered my question, John. Thank you, uh, Doug. Go ahead. Was uh, but I I'm a little unclear why, and I I get most of it why. But why then did we have to spend the money here? Was that in? Did that help us get the money back that they were in delinquency for for the 75 working days? Well, the, so the contractor, you know, for various reasons, they they would be on other projects or they would just take took a longer time on this project. Uh, the engineer, um, they still come out on the project, not necessarily every day, but as everything drug out with the contractor, um, there was just more time required with Erickson Engineering for that. So, and and there's no, we don't have to worry about uh, getting the money from um, from the contractor. I mean, it, it's not, there's not going to be litigations in this. I mean, is it a pretty much a done deal that we're, we're going to get our... Um, uh, the, the project's not final doubt. We are going to hold the project open over the winter um, just to see how some of the corrective work turns out as well as some seating and erosion controls. And we're holding a significant amount of um, retainage more to come. Um, um, it will plenty to cover what um, these amounts would be. Thank you, John. Yeah. Any other questions for John? Mr. Chair, with all that information, I'd move to approve this. Motion by Commissioner Pohlmeyer, is there a second? Second by Shemansky. Second by Commissioner Shemansky, any discussion? Hearing none, proceed to vote. Commissioner Shemansky? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Aye. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagel votes yes. Motion carries five to zero. And the final item F, uh, consider approval of a pay rate of $155 an hour for snow plowing services for, from townships and contractors for the upcoming 2021 snow and ice season. Um, what this stems from is, um, you know, given some staffing shortages right now in our maintenance department, uh, potential COVID outbreaks and uh, staff having to quarantine and so forth. Um, we've been discussing options how to maintain our snow and ice control at the levels that the public has been accustomed to. Um, contractors, some contractors we know of are charging rates of $140 an hour. Our last rate that we charge when we did township work was $150 an hour. So we thought, you know, we're just suggesting a rate of $155, but by setting a rate for us allows us to just hire, uh, you know, contractors um, at, I guess when, when needed and not have to uh, approach the board for board action again. Um, this would primarily be on our, our uh, gravel road system. You know, hopefully we won't have to do it at all with given the weather, but it's all, all depends on mother nature. Mr. Chair. Yes. I've, I've had not directly with this, but I've had talks with John on how to, you know, do a better service on our plowing and, and I, I like this idea. Um, at least it sets a floor or ceiling, whichever way you want to call it, on on John or or any contractor interested in in uh, looking at doing some of this work. At least we got a base to go on with that. I'd move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Kruger is our second. Commissioner Wright, second. Commissioner Wright, seconds. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes, John, John, does a, a independent contractor or a township uh, uh, carry some liability uh, protection? Uh, you know, such you know, mailboxes get knocked over, things like that. Are they covering those, or is that part of the yeah. hourly rate? We would, ex yeah, we would expect if they're, you know, if they do some damage to property or or um, mailboxes and so forth, that that would be on them to cover it. Yep. 
we'd make sure they'd have a liability or a certificate of insurance and um, those types of things that, that would be right. needed. Thank you, John. Mr. Chair. John, do you have a, just a second, Rich. John, do you have a uh, overall number budgeted for this at all yet? I mean, I get, I get the rate and the rate seems fair and properly researched for me, but do you have a, I get, you're going to tell me you don't know how much it's going to snow, but, uh, <laughs> but do you have, do you have a overall, uh, overall uh, where you want to be before you come back to the board and let us know what's going on? Um, no, I guess I haven't, I haven't, I haven't thought about that. Um, you know, we've had. So it's not going to. It's not going to stop me from voting yes, but <laughs> it would be nice to know where, as we get into it, you know, how much we're spending on it. You know, so. Yeah, we could certainly, um, you know, have as if it's used a lot. I mean, have an update at a future board meeting. I guess if we see how the snow and ice season goes, would that be appropriate? I think so. Considering, um, again, it's it. It wasn't going to stop me, but I think we need to like cautiously go into this to make sure that it's uh, and i think it is uh the best bang for the buck you know what i mean so, okay. and again i just um, i don't see it happening on our paved system so much as it's mainly just the gravel roads okay rich rich did you have something to add? yes uh i had a question for john on this um are is it going to be are you going to be the person making the call to send uh contractor a out to certain roads or who's who's going to be the one uh, kind of making the call on when and how far to go? Most likely our superintendent, maintenance superintendent. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Just no, a comment on that. That's who sends the trucks out now, if, if I understand the system, right? That's who directs the plows when to go. But I did have this conversation again with with John and, and – uh, you're right. We don't know how much it's going to snow, but more than that, I mean, the ultimate problem is we're shorthanded and, and we're by just the test snows that we've had so far, we're not able to get the roads plowed. So this is just one peg. I don't know how, you know, ultimately I'd like to say we're going to hire the shortage or our man shortage up there and we wouldn't need them, but we have to get the roads plowed. So that's, that's why I gave some leeway to those type of questions, but at least it gives us a, a place or John a place to look or us to steer contractors and co townships to whether they they would look at doing it or not. And then I think if he would, if we contract some roads or miles to them, then he could come back with a budget number. All right, John, Mr. so just an update would be great. So yeah, yeah we'll sure, go ahead. All right, I just want to note that even if John wasn't experiencing the staffing shortages, his department has been hit by COVID-19 pretty hard. So this would likely be necessary anyways. And I'm glad that he worked on it. Like the um, personnel committee had asked a while back if there were options. And I just want to thank him for finding some solutions. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully it won't be needed, but it's good to have um, this backup. Mr. Chair. All right. Yes. Um, Paul, you know, go ahead. Whether the factors of you know the, the the COVID outbreaks or even the shortages are are currently an issue today, but just to, to, to give this a whirl um, and try it just for the future to see how it goes. I mean, the county system is 400 miles to plow, and uh, it just makes sense to to try and perhaps work with uh, uh, some of the privates out there that are doing the township roads. Uh, if there's you know a couple miles of road somewhere and and they're closer, it just it just kind of might make sense as we move ahead to, to be able to work cooperatively with others that are involved in keeping the roads safe. I think this is a good idea to, to, to try and then uh, definitely review after this year and see how it goes. Um, hopefully we, we are able to, to take care of our uh, shortages of people and, and COVID goes away and, and normal becomes uh, uh, back in, in but um, I think it's a it's just a good thing to give it a whirl. So. All right with that we will call the question. Commissioner Schmansky, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagel votes yes. Motion carries 5 0. All right, thank you. Is that everything, John? I'm kind of lost track. Yeah, that covers it. All right, thank you. Have a good, good rest of your evening. All right, County Attorney's Office, Mike. 
Mr. Chair, I, I forwarded a uh, a memo to, to to you. Do you wish me to read it or do you wish to do so? Uh, would you please? Yes. This is a summary of the Sheila Murphy performance review. The, the date was November 17th, 2020 from 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. The people present were all five commissioners, County Attorney Michael Young and County Administrator Sheila Murphy. What is going well? Her communication with board members is very good. She has administered the CARES grant program very well. The board meetings and agendas are well organized. The Government Center is going well. What is not going well? The pandemic has made county government very difficult. Sheila tries to do too much. She could delegate more. Rating on a scale of zero to 10, she is between an 8.5 and a nine. Performance is very, very good. All right. We need to a motion to accept that uh, summary. Kruger, so moved. Motion by Commissioner Kruger, is there a second? Pohlmeyer, second. Second by Commissioner Pohlmeyer, any discussion? Here now proceed to vote. Commissioner Shemansky? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagels, yes. Motion carries five to zero. Mike, anything else? Nothing, th but thank you for, for helping me with the process. And what the process was is that I, I uh, talked with each of the commissioners for about 15 to 20 minutes. We then met with Ms. Murphy. Each of the commissioners shared their, their, their points of view and she shared hers. It was a constructive process. And I think that uh, Ms. Murphy is doing very well. Yeah. Thank you for assisting us in that process. It went well. All right, very good. We will move on to county administration and review of the commissioner's calendars. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Schmansky. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, since our last uh, county board meeting on November 17th, we followed that up with a workshop. And then uh, that afternoon, we had our health and human services uh, monthly meeting uh, discussion there uh, with uh, uh, some rearrangement of the uh, health and human services committee. On the 18th, uh, McLeod Treatment Program uh, held their monthly meeting. Um, more news about that will come out uh, in the near future. And then the afternoon of the 18th, we had our ditch meeting on uh, county ditches 5, 13, and 29, an inform informational meeting on the uh, redetermination of benefits. Uh, following that, uh, we had our special board meeting on November 24th, uh, where we talked about the uh, distribution of funds from the CARES Act uh, due to COVID-19. have to go. I have an emergency. And that is it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Here you go. I have to get Doug, on. you want to mute? Sorry to the board. I have to get off. I have a family emergency. That's fine. Good luck. All right, Commissioner Wright. Uh, let's see. Since... Uh, uh, 17th, uh, the workshop, like uh, Ron had mentioned, Health and Human Services, uh, the CARES meeting, uh, the special meeting to find, do the final distribution of funds. Uh, in the middle of that, there was uh, uh, also the county ditch meetings with uh, 5 and 13. Um, budget meeting met uh, last week uh, to go over some of the details for tonight's TNT meeting, and uh, that pretty well sums it up for me. Very good. Commissioner Pollmeyer? Okay. Um, as you all know, I got hit with the COVID bug, so I wasn't at the last board meeting. Um, I was able to attend the special meeting on the 24th with the CARES Act. Um, been doing a number of emails through the personnel committee, and uh, we talked about some of that tonight through the through the um, highway department, but public health, public service, I should say, and. Um, there will be more of those coming in the in the next few meetings with uh, personnel recommendations. So, um, with that, it's just been a lot of uh, emails and um, trying to stay on top of things as uh, I'm trying to get my health back where I need to be. So, thank you, everyone. All right, 
And I'll just wrap it up with uh, the workshop and health and human services that we already discussed. Uh, I had some NACO public safety phone calls that I try to attend when I can. Uh, the special board meeting's been brought up, and then uh, the personnel committee and the uh, emails, text messages, changes that we've been going over that you've been seeing as they went through. The uh, other committee members have been uh, much better at it than I have, uh, but uh, they keep me up to speed and, uh, and appreciate my opinion, which is nice. Okay. Um, Sheila, anything to add to the calendars before we move on? I don't have anything, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right. If uh, if you can here, let's uh, take item A under administration. Thank you. <laughs> item A, consider approval of memorandum of understanding between Law Enforcement Labor Services, Local Number 297, the McLeod County Sheriff's Office, Sergeants, and the County of McLeod, Minnesota, to correct a drafting error in Article 18 holidays um, for their contract, effective for years 2020, 2021, and 20 and 2022. Um, all it was was a, it was missed by the union to put in that they would receive the proper holiday pay, which they've already always received. So no changes. Just asking right. you to please so, approve that correction. Thank you. All right, I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Second by Shemansky. Very good. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. Commissioner Shemansky. Yes. Commissioner Wright. Yes. Commissioner Pohlmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagels, yes. And I'm not seeing Commissioner Pohl or Kruger back on the call, so the motion carries four to zero. Item B. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this update on sale of McLeod County property in Glencoe, Minnesota. I'm going to ask the table it because I know that Commissioner Kruger had um, significant input that he would want to share on Is it just a, especially. It's just an update. Right, yeah. No action so, needed? Um, there's That's no fine. action we'll, uh... needed. But I do want you to know that we have continued. Um, Mark Talevsky, the Environmental Services Director, has been a great help. Um, we've been consulting and finding out what we need to do to sell those properties. But I do know that there is a question of whether or not we should handle that intern that sale internally or externally. Um, and Commissioner Kruger has interest in that that he would want to discuss. So we do not have anything actionable, but... I do expect that we will have this continuing in our next meeting. Thank you. Okay, we'll expect to hear an update on the 15th. Okay, item C. Notification of truth and taxation meeting to be held tonight at 6 o'clock p.m. Tonight is De December 1st, 2020, here at the McLeod County Fairgrounds Agribition Building at 840 Century Avenue, Southwest in Hutchinson. There is signage when you come into the entrance of the fairgrounds. If you decide to attend in person, um, it is highly encouraged for you to attend instead via Zoom. It will be on the same meeting. Um, and that information can be found on our McLeod County website at www.co.mcleod.mn.us. And item D, notification of board workshop to be held following the board meeting on December 15, 2020 via Zoom and at the McLeod County Courthouse Boardroom. 830 11 3D East, Glencoe, Minnesota. Um, I would just note that there is a likelihood that that could be changed to this agribition building as well. Um, Commissioner or Chair, do you have anything to say with, for that? No, I'm uh, admittedly pleasantly surprised how this works here, where the commissioner is more than likely to be in the room and still mm -hmm. uh, socially distance, uh, still allow for a crowd if they wish to, but yet uh, the virtual pieces is. Uh, not so cumbersome because of the size of the room. So offline, we're going to discuss that, but just so everybody knows, this might become our home for a little while, um, depending just on- Just watch for updates. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Anything okay. will be Very updated good. on our website. Thank you. All right. Uh, open forum. Anyone wish to address the board? Press relations, anything? Uh, very good. Looking for a motion to recess uh, to our next board meeting, December 15th, 9 a.m. at this point at the uh, McLeod County Courthouse Boardroom. So move, Paul Meyer. Paul Meyer. Motion by Commissioner Paul Meyer. I need a second, please. Second. Commissioner Wright. Second. second by Commissioner Wright. Any discussion? Hearing now, proceed to vote. Commissioner Schmancy? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. 
Commissioner Pallmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Nagel votes yes. Motion carries four to zero. Again, the truth and taxation meeting will start uh, promptly at six with the same link uh, for those that uh, choose to attend. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.